Hello my strong strong friends and welcome to today's video. I've been doing a couple of different kind of hauls, sharing with you guys the goods, letting you know what's worth buying, what's not worth buying. Um, so far they've been like clothing hauls. Uh, I did talk about knee sleeves that one time, but I want to talk more about general lifting accessories. So I guess we could call this lifting equipment, but it's not so much like equipment that you'd have in the gym, more so equipment for personal use. For instance, I wouldn't rely on my gym to supply a lifting belt for me. I would have my own. So this is going to be stuff like that, stuff that you can buy to either help your lifting or assist your lifting. I'll talk about whether it's even worth it to buy some of this stuff or if you should just save your money. So I hope you guys enjoy this video before I get into it. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe to my channel uh, Hit the no notification bell. I never tell people to do that, but do that and comment down below If you found any of this helpful, I will talk a little bit about belts in this video But some of you have been asking for me to go a little bit more in depth about belts Like when you should put on a belt. I'm thinking about doing that in the next five minute Friday So comment down below if you want me to talk about that in the next five minute Friday or something else. Comment down below, let's talk. First thing we'll start with is shoes. I've done a couple of shoe videos and talked about shoes. I'll link everything with more information that goes more in depth. I'll link all of that down below. So if you're curious about something specific, check out the description so you guys can check it out. Okay, these are the shoes that I've owned at least recently. I have the Nike Romaleo. God knows how you pronounce it. Everyone tells me I'm pronouncing it wrong. Romaleos? Romaleos? Romaleo? Romaleo? Romaleo. Romaleo. I like that one. Romaleo. I say Romaleo because I think it sounds cooler. And then people are like, it's Romaleos. Like, give me the phonetic spelling. Like, I give a shit. Anyway, <laughs> um, these shoes are pretty solid. Uh, I would say mm, oh, plenty of people wear these. I liked them until I found these beauties. I get so many questions about these Matokas. These are actually handmade shoes from the Czech Republic, made by a single guy named Matoka. He unfortunately passed away recently, so I do not believe too many of these will be made. Um, so if you can get your hands on them, I recommend to buy. Uh, I don't think the name will live on, but I've been wearing these since we went to Spain, and I got these in Spain. But recently, I switched back to these little classics for every lift. A heeled weightlifting shoe can help your squat position, but for me, since I low bar squat, I don't so much front squat or high bar squat, I don't really need that added heel to help my ankle mobility um, and help my squat position. So I've been trying out just flats. All the shit that I'm about to talk about, do not get intimidated. If you've got a flat shoe, you can lift. That's really as simple as it is. You'll see me talk about a knee sleeve review and a belt review. Those things are helpful, but this is all you need and you don't even need the Converse brand. I think Eva Januskovich, she deadlifts like 400 plus. What's her best deadlift? I know she did 195 kilos, so it's like 424. In like knockoff Target shoes. Um, I'm sure she didn't change her shoes, but last time I trained with her, she's like, yeah, I just got these from like Walmart or something. They're just knockoff like Vans or knockoff Toms or something. So anyway, she upgraded to the the real deal low top converse. Oh shit, she's getting fancy. <laughs> at nationals. Yeah, so <laughs> this shoe is like 40 bucks. Anybody can get it. Just a flat sole shoe. You do not want to wear a shoe like this, your sexy Nike shoe. Leave those at home, lift in something flat. Or you could lift barefoot. I don't have my deadlift slippers here, but you can also compete and train if you prefer to train barefoot, um, at least deadlift barefoot you can compete in deadlift slippers. You can also use those, those are $12, but they're not as they're not as sturdy, they're not gonna last as long as these. Okay, you don't need to buy anything, just get some Converse. Next we will talk about wrist straps. Wrist straps are something that you want to use when you need to, but it's not something that you wanna rely on all the time. You should be able to pull heavy singles without them. And when you are pulling heavy singles or doing your main compound deadlift, movements probably do not use straps now when you've got a set of eight deadlifts or a set of eight heavy rdls you may want to consider using wrist straps hold the wrist strap around your wrist like so so that you can read the logo in most styles then you will put the barbell through this loop so that you're kind of creating a loop around the barbell and you'll wrap it around the barbell and hold on. Pretty much just gives you your grip a little bit of a break so that you can focus on building your muscles. You don't want your hands to hold you back from lifting heavy weight, but also you do not want to use this as a crutch for a weak grip. So just try 
some wrist straps. I have a couple of options here. You can get these from strongstrongsupply.com and these are 12 bucks, 12 bucks. Yeah. Uh, they're super cheap, super cheap accessory if you need to use it. We also have red. We also have red uh, if you want. You can also go on bodybuilding.com. Definitely a little bit different of a style. These are not great for weightlifting, so I wouldn't recommend snatching in these, but you can get these usually as a free gift from bodybuilding.com. So um, if you place an order, bodybuilding.com usually gives you an option to get like a free t-shirt or free straps. Go ahead and get yourself some free ones if you want to try it. Oh, and last thing I wanted to show, we made a friend, well I made a friend. I made a friend who makes leather weightlifting straps. They're a little too fancy for my liking. I kind of like to just keep them in the pouch and look at them every once in a while. But these are from Onyx Straps. If you are looking for a nice gift for someone that's a little bit bougie, then you can maybe try these. Heat makes leather straps too. You can get leather, cotton, nylon, different fabrics. Yeah, cool. Whatever floats your boat. That. Our straps. All right, knee support. Talked about it in a recent video of all the knee sleeves that I've used. Now, you can either spend 100 plus bucks on some SPDs. Uh, they're good quality, they're gonna be thick, so if you want to be super supported in your squats, then maybe try SPDs or some of the other options in that video. They're competition legal. They're competition legal, so you never have to worry about that. Um, they're expensive though, and they're pain in the ass to put on. <laughs> so I usually opt in training, for Cali Rolls, I just so happen to sell these. My company, Strong Strong Supply Co, makes these. There's two different sizes, so you can get a little bit more support um, or more length in your wrap. It's just a flexible knee wrap. Very popular for weightlifters to use these over knee sleeves. I'd say probably more. Maybe there's like an even split of wraps to sleeves and weightlifters. You see these a lot. Um, a lot, a lot of weightlifters. With weightlifters. Yeah. Of course, in this video, we're talking about my equipment. I'm a raw powerlifter, so we're not going to go into equipped powerlifting stuff. Now, when you talk to an equipped powerlifter, they will have a lot more accessories just because that's the nature of their sport. Well, okay, that's me support. DrunkStrunkSupply.com for 28 bucks. So 28 bucks to 100 bucks. If you're just getting started, this is gonna be the better option for you. I've squatted a ton in these and I still train with them in my off season. I'll link down below the knee sleeve review so you guys can check out all the other knee sleeve options. I'll go more into depth, but these two are what I wear most. Often. Next, we're gonna group into some equipment that I use for bench accessory movements. The first one being the slingshot. This is the product that has essentially built Mark Bell's empire, and it's no surprise because it's a really, really good product. Essentially what this does is you put the slingshot, I'm wearing a jacket so it's kinda hard, you put the slingshot around your arms, and what it does is you increase tension of this apparatus here so that uh, when you're in the bottom of your bench press, you slingshot forward. It essentially means that you can overload your bench press. You can bench more with this than what you can without it. Um, so you're getting heavier weights in your hand. You're working on certain weaknesses. So if you have a weak lockout position, a slingshot will assist you in that specific weakness. And it's kind of fun to push your slingshot bench press. Yeah, so this is a slingshot. It's a pretty affordable um, accessory that you can use. Plenty of gyms will have them, but we have our own just in case. And you've had that. You got that one way like 2014 or 2015. Yeah, like we this got this. pretty old. Slingshot, I recommend, especially if you're looking to switch up your bench press movements. If you're doing like a boring program, maybe working some variations. Another thing that you can get to create some sort of different variation on your bench press is a bench block. So essentially what this bench block is, the purpose of it is to mimic a board press. Usually when you have a board and you're benching with it, um, the reason you would incorporate that is so that you're limiting the range of motion in your bench press. Um, but when you see people set that up, usually you need someone benching, a spotter, and then you need someone to hold the bench, and then if you're You need Instagram, someone to video it, yeah. yeah. If you're Instagram superstar, you need someone to hold your camera. You can cut out at least one person with that <laughs> um, by using a bench block. This just hooks onto your barbell, and it's limiting the range of motion. You can see either a half board or a full board here. I think this is also another really cool product, something easy to travel with. I think they're cheap. I think that was 20 bucks or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they're pretty cheap. Uh, this is from BenchBlocks, blockswithaz.com. Uh, and I've met bench blocks, uh, people from bench blocks too. They're really nice. Um, so yeah, bench block, I recommend. This only has two options, so you can get one that has, I believe, uh, it just, I don't know how many it has, maybe it has five different options. Or four, yeah, uh, something like four. that. I think it goes up to three board. Yeah, so um, good. you can get a, a one to create more um, 
bigger options. So you can use it in your training. You could run like a one board progression into a half board and gradually bring heavier and heavier weights closer to your chest and increase your range there. Exactly. Pretty yeah. fun. You could run a progression on your range of motion with something like this. Last thing with the bench press is we do want to talk about wraps. I don't wear wraps. I used to wear wraps in the bench. I used to wear wraps in the squat. I just kind of stopped doing that. Um, I just felt more comfortable having my wrists open and I've never really experienced too many wrist problems. So I do still have gangster wraps. Um, these are pretty fresh. I haven't used gangster wraps that much. I used to use like cheap Titans that I think I got from Amazon. They're and yours were like really soft to you, the red devils or whatever. Yeah, yeah I had but the they have some Titan pretty red stiff devils. Ones. You could either get something like this. You can see the thickness and width of this. It's a little more heavy duty or um, you can have something a little less heavy duty. So these are the wrap that Supply Co has, Strong Strong Supply Co has. These again, similar to the Cali Roll, are something that you would more often see a weightlifter wear. So it's essentially a boxing wrap with um, a Velcro so that you can adhere it um, and hold it so you don't have to like tuck it in. But pretty simple, really lightweight, good for someone if you're in the front rack position and need more mobility with your wrist, whereas you would very rarely Maybe never see a weightlifter use. Like really like heavy, stiff. Again, a lot of products for weightlifters, less heavy duty. Um, they're just a little bit more approachable if you're looking to get into some equipment and need a little bit of wrist support. Our products at Strong Strong Supply Co. are not IPF compliant. So keep that in mind if you're competing in powerlifting. Next thing, one thing we didn't mention about Mark Bell when we were talking about the slingshot is that he also has a couple of other uh, products like this that you can use in the gym. This is the hip circle. Um, this is a great tool to use for activation of your glute med during the squats and just to warm up squats. So you could do a bunch of monster walks. I have a video also on my activation before the squat, so you can check that out and see how I use the hip circle specifically. Uh, another great product by Mark Bell, I recommend. All right, next we have this crazy, very heavy duty belt. This is a 13 millimeter. Nope. This is a 10 millimeter, four inch wide, double prong inser. Now mark my words, because I will not ever fucking say it again. Um, just kidding, this is it's an inside joke with me and my family. Um, so this is a very heavy duty belt. I got mine from Inzer, uh, Inzer Advanced Designs. Warning when you order from Inzer, it took me about four or five weeks to get this to me. Yeah. Now my dad did get it for me for my birthday, but it still took a long time. A lot of the colored options take longer, whereas if you get like a straight black, they might keep more of those in stock and ready to go. Anyway, it took forever to get this. So <laughs> if you ever at an expo where Inzer is there, I would buy your belt then. I think my mom got hers, same style, same kind of belt at IPF Worlds. So if you end up going to Calgary this year, they may be there. Yeah, I recommend getting it in person just so that everything's great. Now, a lot of people have a lever for this type of belt. I prefer my prong because your girl bloats hard um so i'd rather just not adjust my belt all the time i'm sure i'm sure i would be able to make it fit regardless but i just like the comfort of knowing that i'm in control of this at all times so this is my heavy duty belt this is what i train when i'm going really really heavy this is what i train and that's what you compete in this is what i compete in now when i'm first starting a hypertrophy based program and my rep ranges are really high my intensities aren't as high aren't as close to my one rep max i will wear a velcro belt now this belt in particular is a prototype of one that we are creating at strong strong supply co this video is not a commercial <laughs> um it just so happens that I sell the things that I wear. Uh, imagine that. So yeah, I'll talk a lot about my own shit because that's the reason I bring it to other people is because I use it. This belt in particular, if you're just getting into powerlifting or just getting into weight uh, lifting in general, general gym goers, there's no need to spend, God, I don't even know how much this costs. I mean, I think that I they can start it. getting- <laughs> when, I, when I got this, I couldn't afford it. That's why my dad bought it for me. Um, I think it's over a hundred. All of this together can rack up. So it is indestructible. I've had this for since I've been lifting. You know, you'll never really have to replace this. I mean, I got a bunch of weird snot stains on it, but <laughs> so what I usually wear when I'm in a high volume hypertrophy phase of my program, something I would recommend any lifter who is just getting into belts, do not go off on the deep end and get yourself a 10 or 13 millimeter thick. Inzer belt and spend hundred plus dollars. 
Um, get yourself something that's going to be a little more lightweight so that you can focus on getting some feedback, feeling some something there, some pressure so that you can increase your intra abdominal pressure so that you can use a belt for its intended use. Its intended use being some physical feedback so that you can brace against it. The belt is not there to protect your spine alone. You may see people in the gym or like, this is a very bro thing to do where they're just wearing a belt throughout their entire gym session. You actually wanna tighten it only when you're lifting and you're only really utilizing the belt when you breathe into it. So when you create that intra-abdominal pressure, your belt is there so that your stomach has something to press against so that you're increasing the rigidity of your spine and making it so that your spine doesn't flex or move or twist. You want to protect your spine, but this is not something that you just can put on and you're using. You got to learn how to brace before you get too crazy about using your belt. Get your gateway belt is what I call this. And also if you're doing things like CrossFit, if you're doing really high rep ranges, if you're doing weightlifting, you're going to want something that's more flexible, that's not as stiff, but something that's still going to give you the support that you need. The next and possibly easiest thing to travel with when you are a lifter is chalk and pneumonia. Now, necessary, not so necessary, but if you're crazy, people ask me all the time, what you sniffing on, girl? This is Inhale, sold by Strong Chalk Supply Co. What can I say? This is ammonia smelling salts. Uh, you'll often see people use these, especially before deadlifts. Kind of just gets you a little amped, gives you a little ammonia. If you've ever passed out, people will likely put ammonia under your nose so that you wake up. It's like a slap in the face without the slap. It's like a slap in the face without the slap. And next is chalk. We travel quite a bit, and sometimes you run into gyms that do not have chalk, so it's always a good idea to keep some chalk on you. If you're not allowed to use the chalk at the gym, then just sneak some liquid chalk. It's just a little bit more clean. This is also pink liquid chalk. We do sell pink and we do so white liquid chalk, so pink's such a thing, totally understandable, but essentially you just put some chalk on your patty cakes, try not to put too much, rub it in. In between the fingers, you usually want to search right here when you're gripping. Um, dry it, and you can see it turns from liquid to chalk. Magic! You can get this in either pink or white. Um, I like to just keep liquid chalk always on me, just in case. It is a nice little gym hack, in case anybody needs some. You can make a friend. A strong, strong friend. One more thing, people always ask me about this. <laughs> you care not to get chalk up. I got it from Express. This is the crop top that I wear under my singlet. I call it the singlet shirt, but it's like a Ratchet Club Girl shirt that I got from Express. I wish I could find the right shirt so that we could recreate this, but under your singlet, wear a crop top. Lots of problems will be solved by doing that. All right, I think that's the rest of this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing a couple of the things that I use. Um, like I said, it's not necessary for you to get any of these things. Just make sure you have proper shoes um, and you're not deadlifting or squatting in these kind of shoes. <laughs> um, a pair of Converse, a pair of Vans, that's really all you need. If you would like to start building up the gear that you do have, always start with like the cheapest option, unless you're really committed. Yeah, and it is always fun to play around with these things, play with something like the slingshot, play with something like the bench block. These are just a few. Actually, this is most of what I've bought in my time lifting. You just find that you accumulate things over time. Um, okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know if there's anything that you have that I'm missing, because maybe I need to go shopping. Send me links. Be sure to check out everything that we talked about here. We'll have linked below so that you can check it out as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh wait, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Yo, nice, good. Forgot about that one. And like this <laughs> video if you enjoyed it. Bye.